挽回八花の咎め Shiranui is a synchro archetype that looks to undo the biggest weakness of the synchro mechanic, that being that you need to have specific materials on the field. With the tuner, Shiranui Spectral Sword, you can use monsters in your graveyard as synchro material once per turn. The synchros can help you interrupt the opponent, break the opponent's board in OTK, and the synchro materials all give benefits for being banished. But before I get ahead of myself, let's see what we can accomplish with this deck. The cards we need to focus most of our attention on in this deck are Shiranui Skill Saga Supremacy and Shiranui Sun Saga. Shiranui Skill Saga Supremacy has three effects. Firstly, your synchros are indestructible by card effects. Secondly, that your fire monsters are indestructible by battle. And lastly, that during your opponent's turn, you can quick effect special summon one of your banished zombie type synchro monsters to the zone that she points to. Since this deck is focused around fire synchro monsters, all of your synchros are going to be indestructible while she's on the field. But the main thing that we want to use her for is to summon Shiranui Sun Saga on the opponent's turn. If Shiranui Sun Saga is special summoned by any means, not just by Synchro Summon, you can shuffle any number of zombie type Synchro monsters from your graveyard in Banish Pile to the extra deck in order to destroy the same amount of cards without targeting. Also, if a zombie you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish a Shiranui monster from your graveyard instead. Keep in mind with Sun Saga's on summon effect that the amount of Synchros you return to the extra deck deck is the amount of cards you need to destroy. So if the opponent doesn't control at least the same amount of cards as the amount of synchros you return, you won't get to destroy any of them. It needs to be the same amount. Also, keep in mind that while Skill Saga Supremacy is on the field, her continuous destruction protection will overwrite Sun Sagas for battle. So if you have them both on the field, then don't rely on being able to banish from your own grave with Sun Saga when it comes to battle destruction. So we want to be able to summon a Link 3 Skill Saga Supremacy and somehow banish Sun Saga so we can summon him on the opponent's turn, while also having other zombie synchros in your graveyard and banish pile so you can return them for Sun Saga's on summon destruction effect. Since this is a two player game, just waiting until it's our turn to break the opponent's board isn't going to be good enough, so stopping them in their tracks with the combination of Skill Saga and Sun Saga is going to be the main focus of this deck's game plan. So here's what we need in order to get that going. We need to have a way to get Sun Saga in our banish pile. We need to have a way to get other zombie synchros in our graveyard and banish pile. And we need to get enough materials to summon the Link 3 Skill Saga. Shiranui's got a new archive skill that actually helps towards meeting all three of the items on our end board checklist. The first thing it does is add four of the Shiranui Synchro monsters, Sun Saga, Shogun Saga, Samurai Saga, and Sword Saga to your extra deck as long as you have at least 10 zombies in your main deck. And put Shiranui Spectral Sword into your graveyard. Having those Synchro in your extra deck is helpful so that you have more room in your extra deck for other options. Having the Spectral Sword put directly into your grave is extra helpful though because of its grave effect. Shiranui Spectral Sword can banish itself and another zombie from grave to special summon a zombie synchro from the extra deck with the same level as the combined levels of the monsters you banished. So if you banished itself alongside a level 4, you get a level 6. If you banish itself alongside a level 6, you get a level 8. And if you banish itself alongside a level 8, you get a level 10. The downsides of this are that it is a hard once per turn and that you have to wait until the turn after it's sent to the grave to be able to activate. Thankfully though, since the skill puts it directly into the grave at the start of the duel, it wasn't sent to the grave at all, so we can activate it on our first turn, no worries. The next part of the skill lets us discard any level 4 zombie from my hand in order to search for any Shiranui card, meaning monster, spell, or trap. Getting a zombie into the grave gives us something to immediately use as synchro material alongside the spectral sword, and being able to search any Shiranui card can help us to set up our combos, or give us what we need to survive. Lastly, if we have at least two synchro monsters in our graveyard and banish pile, we can shuffle all extra deck monsters from our grave 
Raven Banish pile into the extra deck in order to banish two fire zombie synchros from our extra deck. This basically means that as long as we can get any two of our synchros into the Grave and Banish, we can put them back so that we can banish Sun Saga to revive with Skill Saga and also banish another synchro for Sun Saga to return for a destruction on the opponent's turn. This part of the skill by itself pretty much fulfills two of the things that we are trying to do. The only thing left is to get the two synchros into our Grave and Banish in the first place and to get enough materials for the Skill Saga. The wording on the skill is kind of weird, but the skill restricts your special summoning in a weird way. If the monster you are trying to special summon has a level, then it has to be a fire zombie, otherwise you can't do it. So no Doom King Baladrog, no Revived King Hades, and no Archfiend Zombie Skull. If the monster you are trying to summon doesn't have a level though, like a Link monster or an Xyz monster, then it can be anything and the skill won't stop you. So what are we going to do about summoning skill saga and how are we going to get two synchros into the grave and banish pile there are plenty of ways to do it and they involve us taking advantage of the discard and search effect of the skill because all of the level 4 shiranui's have benefits when banished like for example with spectral sword and beneficial effects on the field so you can gain the beneficial banish effects by sending from hand to grave and you can search whichever beneficial on field effect that you need the level fours of this deck are squire solitaire spirit master and samurai let's start with our on field effects. Squire on normal summon will special summon a spectral sword monster from the deck. Spirit master on normal summon will special summon a Shuri Nui monster from hand or grave, but banish it when it leaves the field. Solitaire contributes a zombie you control, including itself, to special summon a zombie tuner with zero defense from the deck. And lastly, Samurai can quick effect banish a zombie from grave to gain 600 attack. Banish any monster it battles that turn. Next, their effects when banished. Squire when banished will draw a card and discard a card. Spirit master will destroy a face up card the opponent control. Solitaire will special summon another Shirinui monster from the banished pile and Samurai will return a Shirinui monster from your grave back to your hand. These can trigger when banished for a Synchro Summon with Spectral Sword, they can trigger when banished for Sun Saga's protection effect, and they can trigger from a few other banishing effects the deck has access to as well. Both the on-field effects and banish effects of the Shirinui's are going to be important for certain situations, but there are particular combo lines you can do with them that we'll talk about. What you'll need to get any combo going is any level 4 zombie in hand since the skill will be able to discard it to the grave to get a search up and you'll already have a spectral sword there to use alongside the level 4 to go into a synchro and trigger a banish effect. Generally speaking we are going to be searching for Shirinui Squire so you can normal summon itself and special summon a spectral sword monster from the deck so you can go into a synchro alongside the synchro that the spectral sword in grave gives you. Let's say in your opening hand the only monster you have is Squire, Spirit Master or Samurai. You can discard him with a skill to search for Squire. Then you can play around Ice Dragon's Prison by using the spectral sword in graveyard right away while you control no zombies on your field to banish itself and the level 4 you discarded to go into a level 6 fire zombie synchro. Then with no zombies in grave you'll be safe from IDP for the next part. You normal summon squire and special summon a spectral sword from your deck. But you might notice here that the spectral sword we summon isn't the same as the one we used in the grave. This is a whole other sword entirely. This one lets you tribute itself in order to revive two banished zombies and negates them. But because of the skill restriction it only lets you resummon Shirinui. So then you can tribute it to summon back the materials that you used for the first synchro that you made and with those materials on field you can go into another synchro summon. This way you'll have gotten out two synchros and you'll also have exactly three monsters on the field to link summon our skill saga supremacy and with two synchros in grave we can use the skill to shuffle them back and we can banish sun saga and another synchro. We tend to banish sword saga from our extra deck since it is the least important one but it really isn't that deep most of the time since you'll be returning it to the extra deck anyway. With all this you'll now have successfully set up skill saga supremacy with a banished Sun Saga and another Synchro to return to the extra deck for the Sun Saga destruction. And what's great too is that this combo puts Spectral Sword back into your grave to use next turn. This combo can actually get stronger if instead of discarding Squire, Spirit Master or Samurai you discard Mizuki or Solitaire. If you use the skill to discard Solitaire and search for Squire then you can use Spectral Sword in grave banishing itself and the Solitaire to summon a level 6 Fire Zombie Synchro. Since Solitaire is banished it's going to trigger its effect to special summon another Shirinui from the banished pile. So you can use that to bring back the Spectral Sword. With the level 6 and the Spectral Sword, you Synchro Summon the level 8 Shirinui Shogun Saga, who on summon can banish a zombie from grave to gain attack equal to that monster's attack. And regardless of whether you are going first or second, you banish the Spectral Sword from your grave. This might be a bit weird since you want to have it in your grave for your follow up play, but it'll make more sense in a second. Now you can normal summon the Squire and special summon Spectral Sword Shade from the deck. Using Shogun Saga and Squire, you can 
Link Summon Vampire Sucker, and since you'll have two Synchros in Grave, you can return them both to the Banished Sun Saga and Sword Saga. It's important to use the skill as soon as possible, because it doesn't just make you pick two Synchros from Grave and Banish them, and then return them to the extra deck, it will return all of your Synchros from Grave and Banish, so any other Synchros you summon as your turn goes on will all be for nothing. So after you use the skill to set up a Sun Saga, you can activate Spectral Sword Shade to resummon Solitaire and Spectral Sword from the Banish Pile, which we wouldn't have been able to do if not for Shogun Saga banishing the Spectral Sword, and with those two on field we can Synchro Summon Samurai Saga, Link It and the Vampire Sucker into Skill Saga, and this way you'll have a bonus Synchro Engrave for the Sun Saga's Destruction effect on top of the Banished Sword Saga. Two Destructions instead of one, that's pretty damn good. Maybe the best Shira Nui of all is Shira Nui Mizuki Saga. Mizuki is going to be the best combo starter that this deck has available because it gives you more than the other combos give you. The deck does work without it if you don't have it, but you are going to be missing out on a lot of power by not playing. Discard Mizuki with the skill and search Squire, Normal Summon the Squire, and Special Summon Spectral Sword Shade from the deck, and Synchro Summon Squire Saga. Now you can use Spectral Sword into the grave, banishing itself and Squire to go into a level 6 Fire Synchro, and the Squire will draw a card and discard a card. Extra bonuses if you have any other Shirinu level 4s you want to discard, and it's a nice way to draw into Staples too. With the Squire Saga and the level 6, you can Link Summon Vampire Suck, then you can finally use Mizuki's Grave Effect to revive Spectral Sword Shade, which will trigger Vampire Sucker's effect to draw one card. Even better for drawing into staples and follow-up plays. Before doing anything else, you can return the two Synchros from Grave to the Extra Deck to banish Sun Saga and Sword Saga from your Extra Deck. Then Spectral Sword Shade contribute itself to bring back the Squire and the Spectral Sword from Banish Pile. You can Synchro Summon into Samurai Saga and link it off with Vampire Sucker into Skill Saga. With this, you'll have two Synchros to return for the destruction effect of Sun Saga, but you'll also have drawn a bonus card from Vampire Sucker, making it just that little bit better than the solitaire combo. So as you can see, every single level 4 in this deck is a 1 card combo that gives you at least 1 non-targeting destruction. Maybe 2 destructions, maybe 2 destructions and a draw. And you also have the protective effects of Skill Saga and Sun Saga to keep your board alive. But there are a few things you need to keep in mind when you are doing those combos. With all of the different Shuren Nui effects and how they work together, you are often going to be given a lot of fun options that we can talk about. But that's actually going to be something that you have to be careful about. Sometimes it's possible to get completely lost in the sauce in this deck. You'll have ideas for combos you can do, but you might trip over yourself if you forget some of the key restrictions of your cards. Every single one of your Shirinui Synchros can only be special summoned once per turn. If you need to summon a level 6 Synchro using materials on board at some point during your combo, the only option for that is Samurai Saga because it has generic materials. Meanwhile, Doom Kaiser Dragon specifically requires Plague Spreader Zombie. If you use Spectral Sword Engrave to make Samurai Saga and then return it to the extra deck, you won't be able to summon Samurai Saga again that turn because it will have already been summoned that turn. And you can't summon Doom Kaiser either because it requires Plague Spreader Zombie. For this reason, as a rule of thumb, use Spectral Sword Engrave to summon Doom Kaiser so that you can always use materials on field to make Samurai Saga. If you happen to be going second, there's a pretty cool play where instead of Spectral Sword Shade resummoning a level 4 and a Spectral Sword, it resummons at the level 5 Sword Saga from your banished pile and the Spectral Sword. The reason this might be cool going second is that you can use these as material to go into Squire Saga, who has the effect that you can banish a monster from your field engrave in order to apply the effects based on certain aspects of of that monster. If the monster you banished was a zombie type, it makes your monsters gain 300 attack. If the monster you banished was a fire attribute, you can destroy a backer on the field without targeting. And lastly, if the monster you banished was a synchro monster, then you can destroy a monster on the field without targeting. This so happens that all of the Shiranui's are fire zombies, so by banishing any of them, you get to gain 300 attack and pop a back row. Even better if you banish a spirit monster for this, since the spirit monster upon banish will destroy a face up card, giving you even more removal. But if you banished a synchro, like the sword Monster that you just used as material for the Squire Saga, then you get all three effects since it is a fire zombie synchro. Popping a back row and a monster without targeting, while not even really losing anything, since Sun Saga will get that synchro back into the extra deck anyway. You're going to be able to do this in certain situations that call for it. However, if you plan on incorporating this into your plays, then you have to keep in mind that Squire Saga, just like the other synchros, can only be special summoned once per turn, so it can't be involved in your opening plays if you want to summon it later in the turn. 
return for this play. While we are talking about her though, if you do want to use that back row removal effect early in your plays, you could banish the squire from grave and have the squire discard another level 4 so your combos can still keep going. But if you don't have another level 4 to put into the grave for spectral sword, then spectral sword will have to banish one of our tuners and we wouldn't want that. The once per turn summoning restriction on the synchros isn't going to be so important for sword saga, shogun saga and sun saga, but if you are ever in a position where you are able to special summon them just as like an extension piece for a link monster, just know that you won't be able to use them again that turn. Perhaps a bigger hiccup is forgetting that Spectral Sword Shade will negate the monsters it summons from the banish pile, but it won't prevent you from activating them. That means if you summon Solitaire, you might forget that it's negated, and try to tribute a zombie to summon a tuner from deck anyway. Then when it's negated, you'll feel silly. Technically though, if you really do want to have it or another of your zombies in grave again, but can't get it into the grave by Synchro or Link Summon, then it would be alright to tribute it for no effect with a Solitaire summoned by Shade. Similarly, if you have a Spirit Master in your grave, and your Spectral Sword Shade summons a Samurai from Banish Pile, you can banish the Spirit Master for cost even though Samurai's effect will be negated so, this, so that the Spirit Master can destroy a face up card. In all of the combos we've shown so far, we are using the skill to discard something and search for Squire every time. But what if you already have Squire in your hand? What if there are other combos that don't want to use Squire? It is worth knowing that Squire and Shade are the only cards that actually lock us into zombies. If you feel like you need to do something more generic, there are combos that you can do without them. For example, if you happen to be going first against Tachyons and you have either Mizuki or Solitaire in your hand, then there's a combo you can do that shuts down their plays. If you open up with Mizuki, Mizuki, you can discard it with a skill to search for Solitaire. Normal summon Solitaire, have it tribute itself to summon the OG Spectral Sword from the deck, then Mizuki can banish itself from Grave to revive Solitaire, Synchro summon into Samurai Saga, use Spectral Sword in Grave to banish itself and Solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser Dragon, the Solitaire will summon the Spectral Sword from the banish pile, and here you'll have two level 6 Synchros and a level 2. You could potentially link the Synchros off into Vampire Sucker, return the Synchros to the extra deck with the skill, and set up a Sun Saga in the banish pile, and then link the Sucker and Spectral Sword into Skill Saga, but against Tachyons we can overlay are two level 6 synchros into Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, who can quick effect attach a material to send any card from deck to grave. We could send Mizuki with this to give us a stronger follow up play, but more importantly, we want to send Mischief of the Gnomes, which can banish itself from the grave to reduce all of the opponent's monsters in their hand by one for that turn, including any monsters they add to their hand afterward, and their monsters levels stay reduced even after they are summoned. The important thing about this is that Tachyons rely on being able to have level 8 materials to go into rank 8 Sees, but because of the gnomes, the monsters are all going to be level 7, so they can't go into rank 8s. So basically, there's going to be a free turn for you if you activate that grave effect at the start of their turn. You can pretty easily OTK on the next turn. If you open up with Solitaire, you could instead discard the Solitaire to search for any level 4 Shiranui. Then you can use Spectral Sword Engrave to banish itself in the Solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser. Solitaire brings back the Spectral Sword, you normal summon that level 4, and Synchro summon Samurai Saga. And with two level 6s, you can go into Beatrice that way too. The main important thing about these two combos as they set up Beatrice and Mischief of the Gnomes without using Squire or Spectral Sword Shade, since they both lock you into zombies. It's important that we don't lock ourselves into zombies since Beatrice is a fairy and we can't do it if we activate either Squire or Shade. Mischief of the Gnomes is good against a lot of decks, mainly Ritual, Synchro and Xyz decks, since they do care about levels. So if you suspect that your opponent is playing a Ritual, Synchro or Xyz deck, it might be worth going for this combo, going first, even if your opponent isn't playing Tachyon. The skill also doesn't just search for monsters, it also searches for back row, and this is often going to be important to make our going first and second plays stronger, by searching the continuous trap Shira Nui style Samsara, or by searching the quick play spell Ghost Meets Girl a Shira Nui Story. Samsara has two effects, first of all it can shuffle two of your banished zombies with zero defense into your deck in order to draw a card, that's great for recoverability and follow up plays and all Shira Nui's have zero defense so it always works for them. The main effect though is to banish a zombie you control in order to make it so that you take no damage that turn. Since Skill Saga can't be destroyed by battle, doing this means that they can Alpha Strike into her all day, but it's not going to make a difference because you take no damage. Even if they wipe the field, you'll take no damage. The big point is that you will get guaranteed survival into a guaranteed follow up play. What's cool too, is that if you have the standard Shirinui interruption of Skill Saga summoning Sun Saga for a pop, you can respond to the activation of Sun Saga by banishing the Sun Saga with a Samsara, and then the Sun Saga will also be able to 
to return itself to the extra deck in order to destroy an additional card, making the interruption even stronger, potentially destroying up to three cards. If you have Spirit Master or Solitaire on your field, banishing them with a Samsara on your opponent's turn could be a nice interruption too, with the Spirit Master popping a face-up card and the Solitaire potentially summoning the Sun Saga instead of Skill Saga. And all of that is just a side effect of you taking no damage that turn. And if you have a Samsara face-up, Solitaire can actually revive two of your Shiro Nui's from the Banish Pile, rather than just one. You won't always do it, but having that available is very nice. Don't forget though, during your own turn, if you have any Shiro Nui's in your Banish Pile that you don't need to be there, you can return two of them with this card to draw a card, because drawing a card on each of your turns is going to make it really tough for the opponent to keep up with you in card advantage. So if you're looking for survivability, or if you're going first and you don't need to search for anything, you can just discard the level 4 you need and search the Samsara. If you're looking to play through the opponent's board though, you'll want to use Ghost Meets Girl. This has you discard a zombie monster in order to special summon a differently named Shiro Nui from your deck, but you are locked into zombies for the turn. You can only activate it if the opponent controls a monster though, so you can't use this going first. With this, you can get combos going before using the skill, discarding a level 4 to use as a synchro material with Spectral Sword to get your plays going, alongside whatever Shiro Nui you summon from the deck. If you discard a level 4 and summon Solitaire from the deck, then Solitaire can contribute itself to summon Shade from the deck, and then Spectral Sword Engrave can banish itself and Solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser. And Solitaire will resummon Spectral Sword from the Banish Pile, then you can use Doom Kaiser and Spectral Sword to go into Shogun Saga, who on summon can banish the Spectral Sword from Grave, and Shade contribute itself to bring back Spectral Sword and Solitaire from the Banish Pile. You can link them all off into Skill Saga and use the skill to return both Synchros to the extra deck, and banish Sun Saga and Sword Saga for an interruption. All of this without even using your normal summon, so if your opponent wanted to interrupt you at any point, point you could use your squire to normal summon and summon a shade from the deck to use it that way. But if they aren't interrupting you, then you might have a bit of a stronger play available to you. Instead of going straight into Skill Saga, there are some times where you might actually be able to kill the opponent the very same turn. Skill Saga's quick effect to summon from the Banish Pile doesn't exist during your own turn, but we do have a card that can speed up the process. If you have the option of going into Skill Saga, but you would also have another material left over, then you could instead go into Yuki Ona the Icicle Mayakashi. I know, using a Mayakashi is heresy lore-wise, but her effect works really well in this deck. On summon, she will target and negate a monster on the field, potentially baiting out or preventing any further interruptions. And then, with the other material, we can link it and the Yuki Ona into another copy of Vampire Sucker, so we can use Yuki Ona's grave effect. In Mayakashi, Yuki Ona can be used to revive Yoko the Graceful Mayakashi to non-target destroy a monster. But in Shiranui, you can use her to revive Sun Saga to non-target destroy any card. That's right, Yukiona doesn't just revive from the grave, it also revives from the banish pile, as long as it's reviving a zombie type synchro. Thing is though, if you are going to go for this play, then you have to keep in mind what the opponent has. If the opponent doesn't have many cards on the field, and you could wipe the board with the amount of synchros that Sun Saga would be returning, then going for this OTK play is going to be good for you. But if the opponent has enough to survive, then it might be better to just leave the Yukiona in the grave so they can use it on the opponent's turn to interrupt them since it is a quick effect. Obviously this is a two player game, and if you are going second the chances are the opponent is going to try to interrupt you. However, just for the sake of showing you what this deck can do, this is an OTK play you can do by just having the squire and the ghost meets girl. One of them will likely be given to you by the skill, and you'll also have a discard fodder for the ghost meets girl. Use the ghost meets girl to discard a zombie and summon solitaire from the deck, and tribute the solitaire to summon shade from the deck. Use spectral sword engraved with solitaire to summon Doom Kaiser and use Solitaire to resummon Spectral Sword. Use Spectral Sword and Doom Kaiser to synchro summon Shogun Saga and have Shogun Saga banish the Spectral Sword. Tribute the Shade to resummon Spectral Sword and Solitaire and use all three to link summon Yuki Ona, which will negate an opponent's monster. Then you can normal summon Squire and special summon Shade from the deck and use them to synchro summon Squire Saga. Have Squire Saga banish one of your fire zombie synchros from the grave and by doing so you will non-target destroy a monster and a back row. Before doing anything else return your two synchros from grave and banish pile into the extra deck to banish Sword Saga and Sun Saga. Now with your Squire Saga and Yuki Ona, you can link summon the Vampire Sucker. Now you can banish Yuki Ona from the grave to revive Sun Saga, and you can return the Squire Saga and the Sword Saga to non-target destroy two more cards. This combo destroys four cards in the field and gives you lethal damage. And just the same, if it wouldn't give you guaranteed lethal, then you can always save Sun Saga for the opponent's turn to interrupt them. This is just one of the many things you can do when you are going second with Shirinui. And to be honest, even though I've shown you a whole bunch of combo lines, 
hands, this deck often gives you choices for different things you can do to take advantage of the Shiranui effects. Another cool thing you can do is discard Spirit Monster with the Ghost Meat Skull to summon Samurai from the deck. And if Samurai banish the Spirit Monster, which will trigger the Spirit Monster to target and destroy a face-up card. This could be a nice way to bait out the opponent's interruptions before you get your plays going, and since Samurai is a quick effect, you could potentially use this as an additional interruption. Sometimes you're going to be in a position where you really want to search for Samsara or Ghost Meets Girl, but by doing so you won't have Squire available. And in those cases, you just gotta know how to use the Solitaire combo, because you might still have the Solitaire combo available just by opening it for its normal summon. If getting that back row search is important enough to you. Even Spirit Monster can be a starter sometimes, if you open it with a tuner in hand. To get out a Synchro, then use it with Spectral Sword and Grave to get out another Synchro. It's not as good of a starter as everything else is, but it's really good for follow-up. Since it revives Shirinui's 2, it could also bring back a Sun Saga, Shogun Saga, or Squire Saga to break the opponent's board or OTK them. The last mini combo you're going to know about in this deck is that if you have an opening, there's a quick and easy OTK you can pull off. Whether it be early game, mid game, late game, if you have Solitaire and Spectral Sword and Grave, you can banish him to summon Samurai Saga or Doom Kaiser. Solitaire will resummon the Spectral Sword and then you can Synchro Summon Shogun Saga. And then the Shogun Saga will banish that Synchro from the Grave to gain a huge amount of attack. And it'll become 5500 if you banish the Samurai Saga and it'll trigger Samurai Saga's banish effects to reduce an opponent's monster by 500 to make it even easier to attack in for game. Basically, if the opponent has a monster with 2k or less attack, then you'll be able to make it 1500 or less attack and go in for a clean 4k damage. The only reason you'd go for Doom Kaiser instead is if you've already summoned Samurai Saga that turn. 5400 attack is still a huge attack value that still gets over everything. This is what I believe to be the optimal Shirinui build. I did do a lot of testing before coming to this, however, you can still do things differently based on your own personal preference. The very bare minimum, you gotta play three copies of the best one card stars in the deck, Mizuki and Solitaire, and you have to play at least one copy of Solitaire to search for it. Often, you'll use it only once, however, you should play at least a second copy so that you can discard it with a skill to search another one so you can more easily play around IDP. You could even really play three copies of her if you wanted to open it more, so you could search for the back row more often. You should also play at least two copies of Spirit Monster since it can pop card, but you aren't likely to search for it, so I play three copies to open it as much as possible to help me play against interruption. For the purpose of the combos that I showed so far, there's combos that use a copy of the OG Spectral Sword from the deck, and there's combos that use both copies of Spectral Sword Shade, as well as just being able to use Spectral Sword again can be important. Since you can get them anytime with a skill, you only need one copy of Samsara and one copy of Ghost Meets Girl. They can be pretty bricky anyways, so there's no reason to use more than one of each. The one copy of Samurai, you could say, isn't core to any of the combos. However, being able to summon it as a way to get rid of difficult monsters with its effect to banish what it battles, as well as just having a quick effect way to banish Sharanui's from the grave for their grave effects, you gotta play at least one for those utilities. Gold Sarcophagus is so damn good at this deck. I imagine there's a chance that something might get semi-limited, so we can't play this, but being able to banish anything from the deck can be so versatile. Often we are going to be banishing a Spirit Master to pop a face up during our plays, even destroying a crackdown after it resolves to get a monster back. We could also banish a solitaire from the deck to summon something from the banish pile for extension plays. We could even banish a samurai from deck to add one of our cards in grave back to our hand for follow-up plays. At that point, after putting in the one copy of Mischief of the Gnomes for Beatrice, it's already a 20 card deck, so you could, for real, just end it there. But since the deck has so many one card combos, you'll have a bunch of hands that are just full of monsters, and you'll definitely be able to get some nice combos off, but it'd be a shame to not have back row, so I've got two book and two needle in here since they are great against the meta. Needle in particular is really good against tachyons and even the mirror match if you time it right. And if you have a sun saga on the field, it won't even destroy your own field. It'll just be a quick effect board wipe for your opponent. You don't really have to play any back row in particular, and I'm only playing a relatively small amount, but it really contributes to a lot of wins when you draw into it with vampire sucker or squire. You only need one copy of each Shirinui extra deck monster, and the skill puts all of them into your extra deck at the start of the duel for you, except for squire saga and skill saga, so we just play one copy of each of those. We also gotta play the one copy of Doom Kaiser Dragon, since it's the only fire attribute zombie synchro outside of the archetype we can summon so we can do our combos. Doom Kaiser can also revive a zombie on summon from the opponent's grave, so in the mirror match you can revive your opponent's spectral sword to either keep your players going or to just keep it out of their graveyard so that they can't use its grave effect. You're gonna play one Beatrice for the Beatrice Gnomes combo, one Yukiona for the OTK play, and two copies of Vampire Sucker, the first 
first copy for regular combos, and the second in case you need to link it off for Yukiona. You can do what you like with the remainder of the extra deck, but I've got Unicorn in here to link off monsters that I want to have in the graveyard so that they can be revived. You can also use Vampire Sucker to revive the opponent's Spectral Sword that they can't use its Grave Effect, but it's not as good as reviving it with Doom Kaiser because you are still giving them free material on field with Sucker, and Doom Kaiser fully just shuts them down without giving them anything. Now, I know a lot of you don't have three copies of Mizuki. You might just be trying to get back into the deck after owning it in the past, and truly, the deck does function without three Mizuki, so you can play without it in the meantime, but I would still get the playset eventually if I were you. At the end of the day, though, guys, I'm not here to tell you how to build your deck, I'm just here to show you how to play it, so let's just jump into the replay, shall we? Alright, guys, I know what you want to see. I know what you want to see. You want to see Tachyons getting beat up. I know, I want to see it too. Let's go first against Tachyons real quick, okay? I have the combo. I have Solitaire, I'm going to discard it and search Samurai. Just to show, it could be literally any Shiranui that you search. It doesn't matter as long as it's level 4. So then we're going to use a Spectral Sword, banish that Solitaire, and Solitaire is going to bring back the Spectral Sword. I can almost summon level 4, go into a second level 6, rank 6 into our Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, detach a material to send the uh, Gnomes. I toggle on at the end of my turn so that on his draw phase, I activate gnomes and now with the gnomes being activated everything in his hand is now level 7 well it would be if they're all level 8 then they all become level 7 so he can't do anything I'm also just gonna chain the Beatrice to send a Mizuki for follow-up plays he can't do anything so we just set a back row next I'm just gonna normal summon my spirit master for a follow-up play summon my shade from hand go into squire saga just trying to get rid of that back row real quick so he just uses his book on it book is not very good on this though so we're gonna use a spectral sword banish the level 6 go into the shogun saga banish the uh the doom kai to become 5400. Mizuki as well is going to revive the samurai and I have a spirit monster in case he has any face ups. Doesn't matter though, I'm just flexing at this point. Just gonna activate it and attack in for game. Is the Beatrice is pretty much an FDK against Tachyons, that's basically what I'm trying to say. Alright, so here I'm going into a mirror match, and what do we do in the mirror match? I'm going to use the skill to discard my Mizuki, best card in the deck, pretty much. I'm going to use my Squire, summon a Shade from deck, and go into my Squire Saga. Then we can use the Spectral Sword, banishing the Squire to go into the Doom Kaiser. Doom Kaiser is going to revive his Spectral Sword, yes please. Squire is also going to draw a card, discard a card, so getting that uh, Spirit Master into the grave. The other thing I have to mention about Doom Kaiser is that if if he does leave the field, then Spectral Sword is going to go back to his grave. Now, going into an Xyz play would ignore this, so you can go into this, steal their Spectral Sword, and then go into Beatrice. So I didn't have to go for the Squire combo here. However, I do have a Needle Ceiling, and if I do have a Needle Ceiling, I can take it a step further actually. So I'm going to keep the Doom Kaiser and the Spectral Sword here, and instead I'm going to use my Mizuki to revive the Shade, and 3 plus 7 happens to be 10, so I can go into Sun Saga, not activate the effect, and I have just Shirinui's in my grave to protect me from destruction now, so I'm going for a little bit of a different play here, and it's pretty much going to hard counter the opponent, so I'm going to set my Needle Ceiling, he doesn't have his Tuner, because I have his Tuner, so he can you know, try to do stuff, he's got his Mizuki he's got a Solitaire, he's going to try to bait me out here, try to bait out my back row it's not happening, he's using his Mizuki he's summoning, he's going into Samurai Saga and then, I'm still not bit, I'm still not budging he's going to use his skill, discard his Spirit Master, he's going to get his Squire he summons his Squire, and the uses a squire to summon from deck and now I flip up my needle ceiling because he's finally normal summon and he can chain his samurai saga to return Mizuki to the deck to turn this guy to defense mode it doesn't matter though it literally could not matter less oh no I'm in defense mode it doesn't matter I'm protected from my own needle ceiling by banishing a squire saga nothing matters and I go into a shogun saga using his tuner banish my doom kaiser I could do more things too but I What's the point of that? I'm just going to attack in for game. GG's. I'm the Shiranui Master. Get on your knees. All right, last but not least, I wanted to show a replay for the lore purposes. All right, for lore. So I'm here. I've got a replay of Shiranui versus Mayakashi, the eternal enemies. Uh, but yeah, I have the combo of uh, Spectral Sword and uh, Solitaire. So I'm going to get that going. Solitaire is going to bring back the tuner going into the Shogun Saga, which will banish that tuner. Then I can normal summon the Squire. Squire can summon the Shade shade contribute to bring back my materials and I can link summon my sucker use the skill return my two materials then and only then can I go into a as another synchro and then I can link off into the skill saga supremacy set a couple of back row and mischief of the gnomes it it comes to my hand a lot and it has the same on field effect as its grave effect it's not very good against my Akashi though so it's basically just a needle ceiling and a uh, skill saga here but yeah he's going to start off with a normal my Akashi combo I'm going to interrupt him right now bringing back the sun saga returning my samurai saga 
Saga and my Sword Saga to destroy his monsters. His combo is over, he sets a couple of back row, it's my turn. Normal summon the Spirit Master to bait out any interruptions, resummoning my Shade here. I'm intending on going into my uh, Squire Saga to potentially pop that back row, right? But he is going to Book of Moon me. Uh, that's alright though, I'm going to Link Summon my Unicorn. Discard a card to get rid of that other back row, it's just a Book of Moon. And it's uh, probably a Book of Moon, but anyway, going to banish my... Uh, my Solitaire here to go into Samurai Saga. Hell yeah. Bring back the Squire. Synchro Summon Shogun Saga. But this time, this time, are we going to banish to make ourselves 5,500? No. No, we're going to banish Sun Saga to be Team 6K. GG's. So guys, that's how you play Shirin Nui, but there are a few other things that you should know going into this. DD Crow, it's a hell of a card. If the opponent happens to have it in their hand, they can really screw us over, and there isn't a whole lot we can do about it. We aren't out of the race entirely, but what we are capable of is going to be much weaker. Basically, like 2020 level Shirin Nui's. Thankfully though, the best deck in the game right now is Tachyons, and DD Crow freaking sucks against that deck. And Book of Moon is really good against that deck, but Book of Moon really sucks against us, since we have have so many special summons and follow-ups, so at least online, you can really benefit from the strength of Tachyon to beat everybody's ass unexpectedly. Well, not unexpectedly, but it's just really tough trying to beat both Tachyon and Shirinui's at the same time, so obviously you pick the more popular one. There's a hell of a lot of decisions that you can make while you're playing this deck, so see this video as me giving you the tools to figure them out for yourself. But if you need help making those decisions, then join the Team 6K Community Discord. The link is in the description, and you can ask any question or show any replay that you felt you could have done better in, and the Shirinui experts in there can help you out. Shirinui is one of my favorite archetypes in the game. I remember playing it a lot back in the day in Duel Links and really enjoying it, enjoying the thoughtful gameplay against other good duelists, and I just really love the lore of Shirinui and Mayakashi too, so I'm really glad that both of those decks are competitive together at the same time. But I want to know what you think. Do you like Shirinui? Do you hate Shirinui? Are you just playing Shirinui just to spite the Tachyon players? Should I make a Shirinui and Mayakashi lore video? In which of the Shirin Nui Synchros is your favorite. Mine is Sun Saga. Just look at how majestic he is on his horse. But yeah guys, if you like the video, then slap like now. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell to get notified every time we make a new video. Have yourselves a good one guys, and I've been Undead from Team 6K, signing out. Hey, why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. They would ask where they gon' be. With a song if they wanted the weather, man, I ain't asking to pay no fees. She was homeless and needed a spot. I ain't asking to pay no lease. I ain't asking to say no please. I ain't asking to make no cheese. Scream fake, but it ain't on me. Got clean so it ain't no streets. Why green if it ain't no keeps? Brought cream so it ain't no beef. My team say it ain't no chief. My demon, they hang on me. They seemingly ain't no peace. I seen him, he ain't no beast.